That's alright, don't worry about it. We'll have it all in film. Sit yourself down, drink your lemonade. You can usually do it. Need a sweet amazing taste right. Does that hurt? No, I'm rubbish. You're not rubbish. I'm awake, I'm away, I'm a dreaming. I'm awake, I'm away, I'm a dreaming. I'm awake, I'm away, I'm a dreaming. I got into trials riding when I was about 11 years old, uh, growing up in the Isle of Skye. Um, there wasn't really much else to do there, apart from riding my bike, so I would do that every day. And eventually my mountain bike kind of turned into a trials bike as parts snapped off. Whoa, not bad, oh, not bad. Just the pressure of all the audience. Yeah. I rode for years, just for fun with friends. Uh, around about the age of 17, I uh, started working in bike shops, so I could basically ride my lunch breaks, ride in my free time afterwards. It was pretty crazy for me when Inspired Bicycles first went online. Suddenly I had this sort of world attention. You know, whether it was the New York Times printing their art articles about the video or BBC News, I found that a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. So I kind of let things settle down a little bit. And at the end of 2009, then I started working with certain brands to start doing it as a professional rider. I mean, even today, I still live with some of the same friends I did back then. So on one hand, my life's kind of still the same. On the other hand, I get to travel the world riding my bike, working on making films, so it's pretty cool. I often try to look for new locations for the films or try to theme them in some way, you know, whether it's trying to put a, a little bit of humour into it or building a set. I think we could do something pretty amazing here. You know, what an opportunity. Taking you back to your childhood, playing with toys or riding along the top of rooftops, you know, it can be all sorts of different things. Some of the videos can be filmed in a few days or some of the films actually take me months or if not years to make. I'm gonna try to gap from the platform and land parallel. I think it's gonna work as well. Just gonna might, as always, take a few attempts. Some of the tricks I'm doing in the videos take me sometimes like 400 goes to land one trick, which will make six or 10 seconds of a film, and then I'll be in seven minutes of tricks like that. Our other films are more story-based, getting in the scenery, doing some sort of general mountain biking, and just trying not to fall off cliffs. It's an interesting one trying to work out what your limits are. I mean, fear is obviously a massive part of any sport. The key is really being able to visualise if you're gapping between two buildings. You know, if that situation was four foot off the ground, then you'd do it 100 times out of 100. So if you're up on top of a building, it doesn't really matter that there's a massive drop in between. You just know that you can do it. I mean, now that I'm traveling a lot more and riding less than I used to, I tend to kind of sit with a book when I'm on a plane and try to draw ideas down for either new films or new trick ideas. I kind of put some of these little stick men drawings together and try to come up with a concept that kind of ties it all, you know, into a film. So in some ways I'm almost like a filmmaker as well as a, a writer. In a lot of ways it really benefits me being able to visualize the films and how it's going to look when it's being edited. But on the other hand, it can also be a bit of a curse because you're really worrying about the light, you know, the angles, and worrying about things that you really shouldn't. When I'm making the films, I tend to work with quite a small crew of people, and most of those guys are actually friends that I've grown up riding with. They know how I work. If I'm scared of something, they know how to kind of go about the day to make it all work and keep me kind of calm. It makes things a bit more streamlined. You know, if I'm taking 400 goes, everyone's in it with me, I think, and it's just, it seems to work. With my films, it's not all about going the biggest, the furthest, the highest. It's often about coming up with the ideas and maybe making some tricks fit to those ideas and making those sort of ideas come alive. And things like doing the front flip over the exercise ball and Imaginate. I am thinking about more than just the writing these days with the films. I think one of the reasons that my videos do well on the internet is probably to do with trials being quite relatable. And I think to the general public, they don't really have an idea what it's going to feel like to hit a massive ramp and backflip 100 feet. And that's definitely something I now take into consideration when I'm coming up with new ideas. I'm pretty lucky to come from quite a niche part of biking. I feel I'm in quite a cool position to be able to, you know, take influence from BMX or freeride mountain biking, as well as trials, put it all together, and then try to take it to new places or new ideas. 
it's not all about progression for me, it's often just about having a good time on my bike and feeling confident. And when I'm feeling confident, I feel I can take on new challenges when I need to and try to do things that people maybe haven't seen on videos.